Nein. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Gray James. I'm the current general assistant for the Americas. I'm a member of IFMSA since three years ago. And today, with my colleague Rodrigo, we will have the pleasure to introduce to you to some topics about the GDPR and data protection skills. Rodrigo? Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Rodrigo, as Gray said. Uh, I'm the involvement assistant for the Americas. I'm from Guatemala. Uh, I've been working in IFMSA for the past five years. And we're happy to show you some skills, some documents that IFMSA has elaborated uh, so you can know a bit more about general data protection regulation. So uh, we're, we will start with Gray talking about a, a little bit of uh, general uh, topic and then we will follow with some skills uh, yeah. you can yeah you can ask us uh, at any point and we will try to uh, solve any question okay okay so first so if here we want to go, yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah. That's it. Perfect. Perfect. okay okay let's start with some definitions First of all, if we want to, to talk about um, data protection skills and GDPR, we need to introduce to you to what's the privacy. The, in general, the, the concept of privacy is the right to be free from secret surveillance and to determine whether, when, how, and to who one's personal or organizational information is to be revealed. In a specific, the privacy may be divided in four categories that are privacy, physical, informational, decisional, and dispositional. In regards of this, the European Convention of Human Rights of 1950 as right of, as privacy, right of privacy states, states. Everyone, has everyone has the right to respect, to respect for his, for his private, his private and, family life, and family life, his home his and home his correspondence. And his correspondence. From this basis, From the this European basis, Union has sought to ensure the protection of this right through legislation. Okay, well, let's see the the other a slide to explain something more. Okay. As technology progressed and the internet was invented, the European Union recognized the need for modern protections. So in 1995, it passes the European Data Protection Directive, establishing minimum data privacy and security standards upon which each member stay based in own implementing law. But in already, the internet was morphing into the data hoover. It is today, in 1994, the first banner ad appeared online. In 2000, um, a majority of financial institutions offered online banking. So the European Union Data Protection Authority declared that it's needed the compressing approach to the personal data protection. So now we have the concept of what is GDPR, but actually what is? GDPR is General Data Protection Regulations and it supports the security of our privacy. And to, to know a little bit more of this, we have to introduce to you in a formal way of what if GDPR. GDPR is the target's privacy and security law in the world. Though it was drafted and passed by the European Union, it imposed obligations onto organizations anywhere so long, so long as they target or collect data recollected to people in, the, in Europe. So 
when this is start? This is start um, into effect on May 25, 2018. That's the reason why the, the date is in red in, in red in this slide. The GDPR will divide harsh fine against those who violate its privacy and security standards with penalties reaching millions of dollars. So if you have any question about this, you can ask to us in any point. But now I will introduce to you to some terms that uh, people that know about GDPR, it's always talking. So that are personal data, data processing, data subject, data control, controller, and data processor. A personal data. Personal data, it's any information that relates to an individual who can be directly or indirectly identified. It means names and email address are obviously personal data. Location information, your ethnicity, your gender, the biometrical data, religious belief, web cookies, all of these terms uh, are enclosed in personal data. So what's data processing? Data processing is any action performed on data, whether um, automated or in a manual way. The examples are um, basically anything as collecting, recording, organizing, even structuring something, storing or using or even erase data. Well, and data subject, um, it's the person whose data is processing. These are your, uh, even the customers of a company, um, the visitors in a site, all these people. Well, the next term is um, data subject. Um, data subject is the person whose data is processing. And data controller, the data controller is the person who decides why and how personal data will be processed. Uh, data processor, it's a third party that process personal data on behalf of a data controller. Okay, now let's talk about uh, data protection principles, yeah. Um, when the GDPR starts, uh, people start um, thinking, the companies start thinking like, how we can follow the, the guides of the data protection. So exist seven protections and accountability principles. These are lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. That's the number one. Number two, purpose limitation. Three, data minima minimization. Four, accuracy. Five, storage limitation. Six, integrity and confidentiality. And seven, accountability. Okay, lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. It's processed law. Uh, it means that we have to process lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the data subject. Okay. Number two, the, uh, about purpose limitation. It means that the data have to be collected for a specified, explicit, and legitimate purpose, and not for the processing in a manner that it's incompatible with those purpose. purpose. Okay, the data minimis minimization. Adic it, it means that have to be adequate, relevant, and limited to what it's necessary in relation to the purpose of, for which they are proposed. Talking about accuracy, it's that the data have to be accurate and where necessary, get up and um, keep it up updated. Every reasonable step must be taken to ensure that the personal data that are inaccurate have in regards to the purpose for which they are proposed, are erased or rectified without delay. So that's very important. 
um, the storage limitation, it means that we have to keep the keep in a form which permits identification of data subjects for no longer that it's necessary for the purpose for which the personal data are processing. Uh, in relate, in related with that, IFMSA have like the the forms for the um, the internals that it's like the internal leaderships that Rodrigo will talk about that in some minutes. So just to keep in mind that integrity and confidence confidentiality. Um, it means that we have to process in a manner that ensures appropriate security of the personal data, including the protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing and against accidental loss, destruction or the damage of the data, the information. And accountability, the controller shall be responsible for and be able to demonstrate compliance with the data protection regula regulations. Okay, so next to, to introduce the GDPR structure, it's really important that we know how the GDPR is a structure. So the GDPRs have 99, 99 articles and it's split into 11 distinguished chapters to enable data controllers, processors, and protection officers to, appre uh, to appreciate the GDPR laws that must be adhered to. Um, it includes different chapters um, that are general provisions, the principles, rights of data subject, um, controller and processor, transfers of personal data to third countries or international organizations, independent supervisory authorities, cooperation and consistency, remedies, liability and penalties, provisions relating to a specific processing uh, situations, delegated acts and implementing acts and the final provisions. If you are really like, um, if you are re really attracted by this topic of GDPR, I want to encourage you to download an app that the name is GDPR. Um, and it's a really interesting app because have this distribution and explain to you and even um, work for con um, consultation. So if you want to know something about this, I encourage you to download this app because it's really, really um, entertain, entertain it. Yeah, an entertaining way to, to learn a little bit more about GDPR and the data protection skills. Okay, now we are going to talk about data protection skills. And for that, I want to, to introduce Rodrigo. But first of all, I just want to, to talk to you, to tell to you that it's really important to manage some concept in this, in this new part of the webinar and that it's data protection skills. And we need to, to identify some topics like, um, we need to remember what's privacy. And also we have to keep in mind what it's the data security. So I'm totally sure that Rodrigo will talk a little bit more about that. So if you have any question, please uh, approach to me and I will be here. So Rodrigo, it's your time. Okay, thank you very much, Gray, for the introduction. Now we will continue with the rest of the webinar related to some skills that you can gain during uh, this webinar. So general data protection regulation, um, we can start uh, asking ourselves, what is the reason why we're talking about this? Okay, so today, mostly every data of your daily life can be digitalized from your pictures, your credit cards, every journey, and even your heartbeat. 
more and more of your personal information are stored and used by private companies. So, but what would really happen if the companies do not follow these rules? Well, they can get a really big, big fine and that is bad, right? So data protection, data security means protecting digital data, such as those in database from destructive forces and from unwanted actions and unauthorized users. So as NIFMSA, we divide our work in three different, uh, in, in three big groups. Uh, those are local, national, and international level. Uh, basically, what we will talk about is some um, specific examples of how we can act related to general data protection regulation. So at a local level, uh, basically what we can do is stay in line with IFMSA recommendations, uh, giving always the information to the participants of any activity you will you will have on how this on how the information you're asking from them is going to be used and for for how long and how will you, uh, and for how long will you have access to this uh, basically uh, at the local level cannot be uh, an ifmsa official activity but also it's really important so that your animal is also working in this um, then uh, always remember to also uh, in your disclaimer or in the paper that you will make your uh, participants sign uh, include that the pictures that are going to be taken uh, during the, the event uh, can be used in social media so they are aware of that. Uh, make all, all these things consensual. Then talking about at the national level, uh, we need to ensure all the local activities are following IFMSA recommendations or uh, and uh, an animal's recommendation. Then also get in contact uh, at the national level with the international teams if you have any doubt regarding IFMSA regulations and how or what should you do if you are hosting an IFMSA uh, official event. So you should get in contact with the international team to ask uh, help. And then at the international level, uh, well, it's ensuring animals are following all the regulations and also from our side is giving help regarding GDPR. Um, we will continue with this example of how should a disclaimer look like. Uh, I think, it's, well, uh, a disclaimer basically is uh, this is small text that, says how and what and for how long is the information is going to be used. Uh, you can see this example after in, in this slides. Then IFMSA has a data registry. This is a form that is intended to register all forms used in IFMSA events so that the data collected in the updates to the GDPR. So basically over here, if you are hosting a, an event, you should always remember to the organizing committees or the people who are in charge of uh, developing this form, it's also um, sharing and, and filling out this form so the international teams can get access to, uh, so they can track and then delete. Um, IFMSA has their, uh, what is IFMSA doing to protect your data? Basically, we have four different points that we're going to talk about, and we have some extra points that we will also talk about. Uh, first of all, we have IFMSA privacy policy. Uh, where is this privacy policy? You can find it in the IFMSA webpage. And what does it basically says? Well, this privacy policy is made to explain to you when, why, and how we collect personal information about our members within and outside this site and our mailing list. This explanation includes how we use, store, and the conditions under which we may disclose to others and how we keep it secure. Under the general data protection regulation, IFMSA qualifies as a data controller. That means that we are fully or partially responsible for determining the purpose and means for the processing of personal data. We are required on this law to inform well all of the people who have access to uh, uh, of the contain and within this privacy policy. 
Then the second point is the IFMSA internal privacy policy. And basically what this says is how your data as an IFMSA leader uh, is handled. And what other information can, can, you, can you find on here? Well, it's what personal data we collect, purposes and legal basis for which we use personal data, how we share your personal data with, transfer of data, security about, uh, about your rights as an IFMSA leader, and also identifying and contact details. And the third point uh, of how IFMSA is working with GDPR is IFMSA cookie policy. Um, a cookie is all these tiny files that are downloaded to your computer to improve your experience when you're using a website. So basically, it's these small box that you click uh, every time that you go in a new uh, web page, so you can join, uh, so you can enjoy as full as. This. Um, so this cookie policy basically explains what cookies are, are and how we use them. You should read this policy so you can understand what type of co cookies we use, the information we collect using cookies, and and how that information is used. Uh, for further information on how we use, store, and keep uh, your personal data, you can also check again the privacy policy. And then our uh, the final um, document that IFMSA has uh, are these three different uh, protection at at uh, These three documents are different re uh, depending on who are we uh, reaching. Uh, we have one for externals, one for animals, and their membership and and their memberships. And the last one is for companies that process our data. Uh, basically, these are the four principal documents, main uh, documents that we use as IFNSA uh, to ensure uh, data security. And then we have a final, uh, some additional recommendations if you want to know a bit more about GDPR. So you can check after as that these are GDPR articles, GDPR, uh, GDPR app, and then the code of conduct. That basically the uh, I often say code of conduct is the is created at be because we aim to formulate the parameters of behavior in all activities to be in accordance with the principles and values of the Federation to create a comfortable, comfortable and safe environment and atmosphere for all participants of every culture background and to achieve the best outcomes of the meetings. So this is um, basically what we want to show you of what is IFMSA doing related to GDPR and some, um, well, important examples of, um, of what you should do. Um, we really recommend you to uh, get in contact with the international teams if you have any further questions related to GDPR, if you are following all the rules related to the disclaimers now on that you, you will know what to do when you're uh, developing an, a new form and if you're hosting an international event so that you're following all the IFMSA uh, recommendations. So thank you very much. This is this was a short um, a webinar to introduce a bit of uh, what we are doing. So if you have any further questions, we will be really happy to to answer all of them. Yeah, just to finish, if if you have any, as Rodrigo said, if you have any question, don't hesitate and contact us. And just to let you know uh, a little bit more of what it's doing at IFMSA in this moment. Um, IFMSA, uh, it's working in a, a small working group about GDPR manuals. So we are trying to improve, improve day by day, like all our skills, like medical students, and to help in our organization to be like in in the correct line with the GDPRs. So if you have any question of as NMO, um, don't hesitate and contact us. We will be really glad in introduce to you to a little bit more about GDPRs or uh, to solve any question. Um, just text to us, to our personal Gmails. And 
that's all, guys. I don't know, Rodrigo, do you, do you want to say something to end? No, just uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. And we're really looking forward to uh, keep working in this, uh, in this. So thank you very much. And I have a, a great afternoon. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much.